I'm telling you, Mr. Potter, you'll not get the best of me. Now, George, calm down. I'm not trying to get the best of anybody. <laughs> Clearly, your billion loans can't pay off for the money you owe people. So I'm here to help. Come work for me and then everything will be all right. I can give you the money you need. <laughs> never. I'll never come work for you, Potter. You're just an evil old man who wants to rule this town. George Bailey was the sort of man that everyone loved. He was the town's hero. He saved his brother from an icy death when they were just boys. He stayed home with his parents until his younger brother could get home from the war, giving up his dreams to travel. He kept the town together and united during the stock market crash. It was a man who seemed to have it all together. But George found himself in a situation where all hope seemed lost. In fact, everything seemed lost. Crazy Uncle Billy lost a set of money that was supposed to keep things afloat. And sometimes, even the best of men have their breaking points and need to be reminded about the most important things in life. Confound it! Why can't I do anything right? George! George! What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Who, who's playing the piano? <laughs> can't she learn a different song? But, Daddy, I'm practicing for the Christmas party! Humma! Uh, what was that, dear? Oh, nothing. I was just listening to another story. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Where was I? <laughs> oh, yes. N nothing ever goes right for me. I'm going to go run around in the snow and be miserable and think about how horrible my life is. Son, <laughs> George. So, George wandered around in the snow and darkness, <clears throat> got into a fight, crashed his car into a tree, and finally came upon a bridge. And a thought. A thought? A thought crossed his mind. Why well, could just end it all right here? It could be all over. I wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. I wouldn't have to feel regret or disappointment. People wouldn't have to put up with me and wouldn't have to let anybody down anymore. We've lost all our money. My family hates me. Mr. Potter's going to have me arrested because I can't pay on a loan. I'm going to lose everything. Might as well just... And just as George could say it ending at all, there was a big splash in the icy water below. <coughs> you know, there are days when we feel like there's nothing left to do but to give up. Like we shouldn't have gotten out of bed that day. That maybe the world, well, would be better off without us. Enter Clarence the Angel. Now George, being the honorable man that he was, jumped in to save Clarence, who had jumped into the icy water below. Well, what did you go and do a thing like that for? I did it to save you. What? You jumped in first. Well, you were going to jump in, so I jumped in first, and that helped you change your mind. Oh, boy, I just wish I'd never been born. Wow, well, you get right to it, don't you? Big talk. Big talk. All right, George Bailey, since you're so miserable and believe the world would be better off without you, I now declare you never been born. Oh, <laughs> oh now you're just talking crazy. Never been born. Sheesh. Who do you think you are? An angel? Actually, he was. Actually, I am. Hey, wait a minute. What's going on? George, remember, you've never been born. This is crazy. Are we still in Bedford Falls? Bedford Falls? Why, this is Pottersville. No way. Way. It had finally started to sink in with George that Clarence really was his guardian angel and it made it so George had never been born. Just then, George found himself in the cemetery and came up on a grave with a familiar name on it. Wait a minute. This is Harry Bailey. That's my brother. Harry didn't die. He went on to save a whole transport of soldiers in the war. No, all those men died, George. Harry never saved them because you weren't there to save him when he fell into the lake those years ago. Clarence, where's Mary, my wife? You have to tell me. This is the part of the building where I cry every time. Oh, it's true. <laughs> Man. 
man we've never seen before, and who, for all intents and purposes, might as well have never been born. <laughs> George ran back to the bridge to reconsider his original thought of ending it all. After all, he'd lost everything he cared about. His family. And his, well, yeah, that was about it. He loved and cared for his family. Well, he loved his town and all the people in it. They were his family, too. People are what mattered most to George. Not money or possessions. He cared about making a difference in people's lives. Dear God, please let me live again. I just want my life back. Please let me live. George, George, you better come with me. I've been looking all over town for you. What, you know me? You know my name? Well, of course I do, George. Come on. Well, Merry Christmas. So George ran home to his wife and children, not caring anymore that he would probably be thrown in jail because Mr. Potter wanted George arrested. Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Merry Christmas, Emporium. Merry Christmas, you old movie house. Merry Christmas, Building and Loan. George ran all the way home and found the police waiting for him. But he didn't care. He didn't care about going to jail. Because he had his family back. But not only that, people were flooding his house from all over town to show their love and support for George. And George and Mary Bailey lived happily ever after. Because George finally realized that happiness wasn't about all that you can accumulate. It was not about having the most money or the biggest home. And like George, another Christmas character learned the same lesson. In 1966, Chuck Jones introduced us to the green hair, Christmas despised the Grinch, as he detailed the plot and planning behind. How, How the Grinch stole Christmas. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, well, he most certainly did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Oh, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, painting the hoops. They're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a snare. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his rich fingers, nervously drumming. I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. So the Grinch made a plan and made his to-dos. How to stop Christmas for all of the hoops. Into each home he slithered around. Being quite careful to not make a sound. The tree, the stockings, and their Christmas feast, too. Leaving nothing for Christmas for all of the Hoos. So proud of himself, the Grinch waited with glee. The Hoos shocked and sad, and he waited to see. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then all the Hoos down in Whoville will cry, boo, boo. That's the sound I must hear, grin the Grinch. That I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising out of the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. In fact, it was Mary. It couldn't be so. But it was Mary, Mary. He stared down at Bluebell. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook and he shook at a shocking surprise. Every goo down in Bluebell, the tall and the small. Their singing is singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas for coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch with his Grinch, the ice cold in the snow. Stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes, or bags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzle were sore. And then Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say. The Grinch's small heart grew in three sizes that day. So what can one take from the short Christmas ride? So many lessons, but in this short time. Christmas is not about presents and bows. Christmas is not about whether it snows. Christmas is not about the most tinsel tree. Christmas is not about a perfect turkey. So the Grinch was right. It's about something more. Christmas is all about who you live for. God sent his son an amazing Christmas birth. The son came to save you and those on this earth. So be like a goo and celebrate more. Then the things of Christmas you can get at the store.